So now in this video, we're going to look at the 4011 integrated circuit uh, right here. We are using 12 volts, a lot of integrated circuits similar to this. This is CMOS here. Um, they're very susceptible to static shock, probably this one as well. Um, also, they may not be able to work with more than about 5 volts. And uh, this one can. So I always look at the data sheet for the particular sheet you're using. And um, since this is a CMOS, I'm going to try to make sure... I, uh, you know, discharge my body of any static charge it may have before I touch something with a direct connection to that. Um, just thought I'd mention that. But in any case, right now both inputs are low, and uh, this has four NAND gates in it. So with a NAND gate, you need all the inputs to be high for the output to be low. So the inputs all have to be to the positive supply, at least close enough um, to it. The trim pot is adjustable. Um, but we'll see when I turn the trim pot, it, when it goes from low to high. And um, right now the output's high, so positive supply is coming out of the output uh, and lighting the red LED, you know, pretty pretty well. And uh, first I'm going to move the jumper. So I should, uh, before I touch the jumper, since my body um, can come into contact right there, I'm um, going to move it to the positive supply. But the output uh, stays low right there, and uh, I got to turn the trim pot now to go high. There is a middle ground region though where they will both uh, kind of light up right this. And um, so I think the output's kind of in an iffy state. Now we got uh, two high uh, inputs right there. Ideally you want usually digital circuitry that jumps instantly from either high to low or low to high. You don't want uh, kind of middle ground region voltages with this but uh, for demonstration circuit and practicing I like uh, these two um, setups. So now, I made this diagram a while ago. Got a bunch of uh, extra stuff written on here. I think I'll remember exactly why I wrote it. But uh, first off, we have the uh, truth table right here for the NAND gate. As I demonstrated, if any input is low, connected to the negative supply or ground, VSS, um, in this case, with this particular one, then the output is gonna be high. We need all inputs to be high for the output to be low. This can also be thought of as red LED in this particular circuit and blue LED. So now we'll come to the uh, schematic diagram that I drew. So we have a couple of inputs and an output uh, right there, A, B, and then we got Y for the output, but it might also be X on there. Um, it was probably Y on the data sheet. Uh, here's the other NAND gates right there, input, input. Um, I'll put in the middle of those two and then same on this side right there. We're only using that one right there So we're using one out of four of the NAND gates in the 4011 right there So this is an AND gate symbol right there That would mean that both inputs have to be high for the output to be high Otherwise it will be low, but uh, there's a dot right there. That means inversion. It's like a little NOT gate right there um, so the output's going to be the opposite, since it's a dot there, of what the AND gate is. Hopefully that makes sense. If you see a dot at uh, the output there, that means it's inverted from what uh, the base symbol means. So now we need all inputs, two in this case, to be high in order for the output to be low, to be the opposite. We already saw the true table. And there you can see blue LED lights up when we go to the negative supply at the output. And then uh, when the output comes from the positive supply, that's when the red LED lights up. I go through that a lot. Now I'm using high value uh, resistors uh, right here because uh, this particular integrated circuit can go up to 15 volts. If you really want to, you could do like 18 volts, but I would really limit that. I'd even probably limit it uh, for uh, 15. But uh, we can do 15. So 1,500 uh, ohms of resistance is uh, plenty of resistance to protect the LEDs from uh, 15 volts, you know, uh, probably about uh, where you'd want to end. The uh, trim pot is a 10,000 ohm trim pot. Doesn't matter what value you use. Um, you know, maybe you could go too high if it was like millions of ohms, uh, but uh, uh, 10K is usually used. And um, you don't waste a ton of uh, current, but you are wasting current. Whenever there's power to the rail, Currents flowing through the trim pot. You got to remember that it's a resistor, but it has a wiper. So the middle pin is the uh, wiper that connects to the resistive element there. Um, so when you're closer to the positive supply, 
you'll get a you know fraction of that positive supply but it'll be closer to the positive supply than uh, zero volts if you go down below halfway then it's uh, closer to zero volts so you'll have a lower if you go uh, if you're using 15 volts and you go down to about a third of the distance up that way and then a third down towards the bottom then you'll have like 5 volts at that input. Inputs don't let current in or out, it just looks at the voltage. If you draw current, that could throw it off. Um, basic stuff. Now you can see the inputs for the other uh, NAND gates are uh, two of the positive supply. You should be able to go either positive or negative. You could use a resistor too or whatever. You want to give them a specific voltage. As I showed before, the trim pot, kind of halfway. We get an iffy output uh, state um, at a particular point and uh, the output might not be um, I have to go positive on that one that's the problem there we go the output may not be you know really producing uh, power right there um, at some point it may just be flowing uh, uh, through those two but when it comes to the jumper there they're they're both lit uh, but it's because the outputs actually oscillating between high and low it's picking up stray signals in the air and I should make sure I'm discharged uh, myself but my body can give it stray signals as well um, that that are alternating um, so when that comes to the unused NAND gates they can also start oscillating and stuff and cause problems with the integrated uh, circuit so I may not always show it uh, when I make demonstration videos um, sometimes I don't feel like it but you should always uh, tie down the unused inputs leave the outputs alone though remember they provide a uh, power um, and uh, you can just leave them floating if they're not being used so now we got the uh, pin layout that's also the full part number that's on there um, I can't uh, even read that I don't think with my bare eye but I got a magnetic loop I don't see where I put it right now um, where I was able to read it this is a uh, dark uh, lettering but uh, in any case we got the first uh, NAND gate over here and I drew a little pictorial there uh, that's often helpful uh, but we got input input so this is number one a b and then it says q for the output that must have been on the data sheet uh, right there but there you can see the symbol of, of how these go there's uh, four of them vdd is the positive supply vss is the negative supply that's uh, often shown on a cmos uh, component so uh, we'll zoom over there so positive supply negative supply that's a common setup positive supply negative supply um but uh, not always be aware of that and um so um the when it comes to the outputs, you can provide a little bit of current. Um, so that's another reason why I'm using high value resistors. That's mostly because we can go up in voltage uh, quite a bit. Um, if you try to provide a fair amount of current, the voltage is going to drop. And ultimately, you can't uh, provide a lot of current with the outputs. It's meant to be sent to like other digital circuits or to switch transistors or something. And um, yeah, as the supply voltage goes up, it can provide more current than it was at the lower uh, voltages, the outputs. And you can go down, to, according to the data sheet, to like three volts and then up to 18 right there. So a lot of integrated circuits similar to this are just five volts for the most part. It's got a little wiggle room above and below, but not much. And um, again, like a lot of integrated circuits, the output uh, usually doesn't go to the full positive supply voltage. So Right now I got it powered to a, a 12, but we could go up to 15. And uh, the output should get up to 15 volts, but probably not while you're lighting an LED. A lot of integrated circuits, you can get that to ground to uh, zero volts. This one, I bet you can't even do that. Um, so yeah, output uh, different with different integrated circuits. With this particular one, um, if you're not providing current, you can probably get to either uh, supply voltage, but any load, will probably make that drift away. Hopefully that makes sense. And uh, yeah, I think we got pretty much everything. Uh, a lot of times uh, outputs, you'll see, um, you know, Y, Q, I think X as well. And um, I, I'm pretty sure X sometimes. Um, but a lot of times I try to go by what was on the data sheet this time. So the output, uh, you know, may have different letters. Don't think there's a specific letter to indicate the uh, output or even the inputs uh, right there but a and b are, are pretty common and um so yeah vss yeah that may be confusing 
with a lot of CMOS uh, circuitry based integrated circuits, transistors and uh, other things. You may see, see VSS where it's talking about the ground of the uh, part of the circuit where it connects to ground. So yeah, that's uh, really about it. Uh, video went on much longer than I expected, but uh, hopefully you enjoyed. Make sure you check out one of the other videos I'm posting on the screen and check out the links down below. They all help a lot. I'll see you in the next video.